Next, we'll show how to solve a very useful allocation problem that's common in finance. But before we do that, I have to show you another built-in queue operator. This operator is called deltas, and what deltas does is compute the successive differences across a numeric list. So, for example, if I had the list 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, deltas would tell you 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, which looks fine unless I would start that list with 100. And so 110, 120, 130, 140, and you'll notice that deltas gives 110, 10, 10, 10. The reason for this is there's actually no previous item to do a difference at the beginning of the list. So we could just debate what should the answer be, and there's a very good case to make the answer should be zero. There is no difference on the first item, and in some cases that's what you need, and there's another function that will do that. Deltas, as it's, we're using it here, does not do that because it wants the following identities always to hold. The deltas of sums of the original list is the original list back, and sums of deltas of the original list is the original list back again. Right? These are what are called invariants, and it's a very powerful method of designing a programming language, and this is how Arthur thinks in Q. So, that is deltas, and we're going to use that with this particular use case in mind. We notice that deltas unwinds a cumulative sum to give you back the original list. That is this one, right? We take a cumulative sum across the list, deltas will unwind that cumulative sum and give us back the original list. All right, keep that in mind. We need one more concept in Q. You'll notice we've been doing quite a bit of Q, and we haven't yet described what a variable is mainly because we didn't need one, because all of our computations, our solutions were so short, there was no need to store the result anywhere. We just did our computation and returned it. But sometimes it's convenient to have a place to store a value. In Q, that's called a variable. In many programming languages, it's called a variable. As a mathematician myself, I take umbrage at calling this a variable because it's not a variable in the mathematical sense of a variable. What programming languages call variables are really nothing more than named storage locations. So they should be called assignables. You can assign a value to some storage location that has a name associated with it, and after that you can retrieve the value that's been assigned. But we call it a variable. So here's what a variable looks like in Q. A, that's pretty much a variable in any language, but here's what assignment looks like in Q, which is not what it looks like in most language. It's not equals. It's colon. This says, right to left, assign the value 42 to a variable named A. Somewhere behind the scenes, there is a storage location that's associated with the name A, and 42 is put into it, and now, when you refer to A, it retrieves that value. There's nothing sacred about the value 42. Well, there is, but in this particular case, I can re uh, replace it with 98.6, and now A has 98.6. Um, that's displaying all the decimal places. Let's put it back to the default so it looks more familiar. There, 98.6. So, why does Q use colon for assignment. Why doesn't it use equals for assignment? Well, let me turn that a question around. Why do traditional programming languages use equals for assignment? My answer to that question is they should be shot. If your language uses equal for assignment, it should be shot. Because assignment is not equality. We've already seen equality in Q. Equals in Q tests two items to see if they have the same value. That's what equality is in mathematics, right? Equality is not let A equals 42 and three lines later, later let A equals 98.6. That's assignment, right? So Q uses colon as assignment, not equals, because equals is not assignment. Equals is a test of equality, right? So, yes, it's funky. We, we have colon instead of equals for assignment, but at least we don't pervert the notion of equality with the notion of assignment. All right, so now we know about variables. Now we know enough to solve an allocation problem that is quite common in finance. So let's say that we've bought a certain security in some lots. To make the problem easy, 
we'll just say that our buys are integer amounts, 2, 1, 4, 3, 5, 4. You notice I'm copying this so that I don't make mistakes. And we have a cell which is 12. All right? So the way this works is to allocate the buys to the cell, we have to do it in a first in, first out manner. That means we start from the beginning. So in this case, we're going to allocate 12, starting at the beginning of buys. We take all of 2. We take all of 1. That's 3. We take all of 4. That's 7. We take all of 3. That's 10. We take 2 from 5. That's 12. And we're done. So the allocation should look like 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 0. Right? That's our answer. How would we compute that? You would say, surely this must be a loop. And I would say, I'm still not surely. However, there's an insight here. Clearly, when I was doing the allocation, I was doing a running sum. So let's compare the running sums of the desired allocation with the running sums of the buys that we have to draw from. And what we'll notice is they're the same up to the point where we met our allocation. 2, 3, 7, 10. And then we took 2 and we were done. All right, so we have the sums of the buys compared to the sums of the allocation. They're related in the fact that, well, the sums of the buys is capped at the cell amount. Once we hit 12, we're done. Well, we know how to do that. We have our friendly operator amper that will take the lesser of, of two uh, arguments. So if we apply amper to cell and sums of buys, now we've kept our sums of buys. And it looks just like the allocations. And we say, well, that's nice. We have the cumulative allocations. But I don't want the cumulative. I want the individual allocations. Wait a minute. How do I do that? I need to unwind a cumulative sum to the individual items. Ah, yes, that's deltas, our friend deltas. And there, in fact, is our answer. Stare at this for a minute. I used one, two, three Q operators, and I solved this problem. What would you have to do in Java or Python or any other traditional programming language to solve this problem? Could you do it with three operators and this much code? I don't think so. Now you're beginning to get the, real, the sense of the real power of Q. Serious computation in a single line of code.